Uh, the next one is from Rip Boy One on Instagram. All right, it's a long one, so I'll just read it quickly. When to focus on each aspect of physical preparation? I'm talking about three energy systems and especially the development of cardiovascular fitness. Should you train all the all all in one phase while focusing on one more than the other? Um, aerobic on Monday, lactic on Wednesday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or train each system only based on the phase of the preparation that you are in. Go ahead and take this one because I've kind of hit this one several times and then I'll chime in on this one. Sure. I'm a big fan of the concurrent approach when it comes to uh, energy systems training. Um, the best way I've seen it done and uh, the best way I've been able to apply it is using a high-low system whereby you have a high day or you know, high intensity in inverted commas, uh, you know, your alactic anaerobic work on one day and you have your more aerobic based work on another day uh, you can you can develop both energy systems quite well by splitting them concurrently like this um, and there are infinite different ways to structure programming around the high low system but uh, for me I like to keep it as simple as possible and uh, and try not to overload the athlete because you need to take into account the overall training volume, um, especially pro fighters. You're looking at you know 12, 13, 15 training units per week. Uh, you can't you can't expect to grind your athletes with too much high day work or a lactic anaerobic work in a training week. So I like to keep it uh, to a minimum and always balance it out with some aerobic work or active recovery work because at some point you need to down regulate the uh, the nervous system you, you cannot have these guys redlining throughout a camp um, i'm sure you've seen examples of this phil where just too much is too much you know what i'm saying oh yeah um you know I, i've done a whole youtube video on this on scheduling out your energy systems based upon the skills training, especially inside a camp, mm. right? Mm. Because inside a camp, fatigue management is key. And skills training is hierarchy, is more important on the hierarchy of, of important, like I said, an overall importance on from a pyramid perspective. So with that, as far as your energy demands, I do use a high-low approach. That's why we work so well, me and Mac together, right? Um, similar views. You know, with that being said, they are training these multi bioenergetic demands throughout the entire week through the skills training. And most of the training is highly mid intensity, it's lactic. So instead of me beating a dead horse, like I said before, is that I want to make sure that I'm giving them what they need from an alactic perspective so that we can increase rate of, you know, re repeated sprintability or repeated bouts of energy so that they can have power endurance throughout the entire fight because that, let's face it, in almost 85 to 90% of the fight is by that particular energy system, right? We are working on exploding and then recovering throughout the entire time of the fight. So, and with that being said, also you have to make sure that you're not throwing the organism in two different directions. So integration of energy demands do come into play, especially because we have limited time with our athletes, right? So we have primarily for me, only have two days a week with them inside the weight room. So yes, I need to make sure that I'm hitting that in a concurrent fashion. Right, but it has to match the energy systems or the time frame of the particular weight room work. Mm. So again, we work in those 10 second intervals, right? So it's 10 seconds and lower, you're working that ATP production, right? And we're making sure that we're not going into any lactic, especially inside a camp because absolute strength, speed and power is gonna be more important, especially getting closer to the fight because obviously overall volume is gonna go down, mm. right? Now on the off days when they're not in the weight room, yes, you wanna do some, when you're talking about a high-low approach, we work on the more lower intensity days. So aerobic capacity, aerobic power, some tempo runs for restoration, right? And then also maintaining an aerobic, an aerobic capacity or an aerobic base, yep. right? <clears throat> So, I mean, at that point, developing the aerobic systems kind of shifts down the priority list and, you know, increasing, increasing active recovery and down-regulating the nervous system moves up in the priority list just because of the intensity of those, uh, those strength sessions. When you, when you get into, when you get closer to the fight, capacities are gonna be more important, right? So you have to have the ability to get to that particular, you know, frame and 
sustain it, right? As opposed to working on a lactic power or aerobic power, or I should say anaerobic power or, or lactic power for better terms, mm. you know, um, because of the fact that they're getting closer to the fight, they need to have to repeat bouts of energy, right? And again, like I said, this is the way the fight goes. This is, this is the fight game. So they need to have that ability to have that power and have that power throughout the entire time. Yeah, it's good. I think um, one of the most important things you pointed out there was respecting the hierarchy of needs. I think that has to, you know, everything has to fit into that hierarchy of needs, whichever way you structure your training. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, you have to know the schedule. You have to know the schedule of the skills training so that you don't overload the system, mm. right? So if you're doing, if you know your fighter is doing a hard wrestling session, then you need to back it down and give them some aerobic capacity or even some light aerobic power work, some tempo runs, or some LSD work, nothing that's gonna be too physically taxing, keeping the heart rate in zone two, if anything, right? And making sure that we're getting that mitochondrial density, we're increasing that, 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 uh, that VO2 to an extent, and we're also making sure that we're getting blood flow, which is gonna be key for recovery.